Uh, no, we're just yeah, we're just chilling. So man, uh, I, Nick Miller, yes, appreciate sir. you having me here. We're uh, this is a topic that I've been actually nervous to talk about. It is uh, I've, I've had like most people are. Well, so I got on your Facebook and and you and you wrote something. There's one word on there that I, I was reading about the uh, how's your day going project, and it said taboo, and I was like, you nailed it because it is. In this subject of suicide, is it, it really is beyond comprehension that we don't care for it in such a way of all the other elements that we have as people. You know, um, I can make a bet right now. I, I put every dollar that I have that if you left here today and you were mm-hmm. driving down the highway and there was somebody of any race, nationality, color, kid, old, new, or small, and they were limping or hurting, right. you'd stop and help that person. Mm-hmm. But when we get to a point, it seems like when we talk about like there's no there's nothing physical I can see wrong with you, but you go, man, I, I don't really feel good inside. Like some something's broken here or here. And then we're in and, and then in my experience, I've been I've been embarrassed to talk to people about it. I've been I've been embarrassed to say it because I kind of consider myself an alpha male. I do things, you know, I like guns and hanging out. But then I get to a point where if I say something to, you know, the first time I told my wife, my wife doesn't have this. Mm-hmm. And she's like, What? Yeah. And I'm like, I, I don't feel good. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I, I, I don't know. It's and not I, physical. That's yeah. And so it has been something that I've dealt with on my own for a very long time. And I think finally kind of coming into a phase of my life where I feel very healthy and I'm very confident to talk about it because I feel like I've kind of got my stuff kind of under wraps. Mm-hmm. So preluding to that, that's why I want to talk to you because the thing that I, I'm trying to build this for you and then I want you to go off on your own tantric here. Okay. But so the topic of suicide has always been something I've been passionate about. Um, I have a lot of empathy for anybody that has thought about it or committed suicide. And I, I've gotten around people that'll say, well, they're just weak minded and they're, they're pussies and stuff like that. And, and I'm a a point where I've dealt with it on my own that I go, I don't think you understand how much pain that person was in to think that way. Like they're in, and if I had like a superpower, I wish I could be there like the day before and just sit with them and say something. And so this card that you handed my wife and me touched me and, and I, and then I'm going to read this and then I want you to talk about how you got to here. And that is, you have a, it's a hashtag says, how is your day going? And these are cards that apparently you've been handing out to people all over the country. And on the card, it reads, we don't have good days every single day. Life happens, and sometimes we need a little pick-me-up. I hope you have a great day. Remember that you matter. I'm sorry. Remember that you matter, and we're all in this together. Please pass this on to a stranger and keep the love going. They may need to hear this more than you. Loving energy is the best thing that you can pass on to a stranger. Dude, that's powerful as shit. Mm -hmm. Like, that is badass and of all the things that are going on around my life i really thought this is a very impactful thing that you are doing and it's very noble and and i and i'm i want to get behind you and i hope that this fuel that has lit this fire i hope i'm help you with that catalyst Mm -hmm. so tell me how you got to this how did this become this Take me back. Um, <clears throat> so basically, uh, mental illness is something that's always been on my mind. Um, I've always, in the back of my head, had uh, and some kind of ambition to try to help out in some way or shape or form. And, and this year, um, more so than the rest, um, certain things fell together uh, in order for me to, to start this project. And those cards were actually the first thing that I did. Um, I had all these ideas in my head and I just wanted to start something wanted to start somewhere so um basically you know throughout my life just like you and and many other people um it's not that that we're weak or anything like that like you said we're both manly men Mm -hmm. you know uh, you know alpha male type uh like guns and race cars and things like that and and a lot of times it's uh looked down upon you know males especially to you know cry or say their feelings or anything like that but Deep down, a lot of people are actually going through some some bad stuff. And, you know, that guy on the street that, you know, is limping because his legs hurt, uh, oftentimes that other guy that's walking right next to him that you can't see is injured or has something going on is a lot worse off than him. Yeah. Um, so 
this project, um, it actually started out um, about six months ago, and there was a guy named Joseph Solomon. He's out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Shout out to Joe. I'm sure you'll see this later. Um, <clears throat> he really inspired me. Uh, the way he did that is he started a uh, Facebook page. Y'all can go check it out. It's kayaking for the number four, a cause. If you type it on on Facebook, you can see it right there. Um, and basically what he did is decided um, he goes through mental illness himself. Okay. Uh, he is permanently disabled, and I'm not going to give away any of his story because that's what this documentary is going to be. His backstory is going to be the backstory behind this documentary. Okay. Um, so I... Ran into him on Facebook, saw what he was doing. He kayaks to help himself get better. So when he's having a bad time, when he's going through a rough patch, he goes kayaking. And I think he did that for two or three years, like every day, uh, something like that. Now, um, he's done some pretty incredible kayaking. Yeah. Trips. What he what he recently decided to do about six months ago was he decided to take on the feet to kayak the entire Ohio River. So 982 miles from... Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Cairo, Illinois. Um, and he is doing that strictly to raise awareness for mental health. Uh, now through this, is he, is he getting funding for, uh, he, I think he had a GoFundMe set up for the trip. Um, okay. and then he also had a nonprofit set up, which is NAMI, the, uh, National Alliance for Mentally Ill. Uh, they're the biggest grassroots association in the country, uh, to help mentally ill people all over the country. Um, so he was set up through those guys, and then he had his GoFundMe to help uh, with food and things along the way mm -hmm. because he tried to do this trip straight. I think he had a couple setbacks uh, where his kayak uh, took on water, and he had to stop and and you know um, and get help from from some of the neighbors. And that was part of the story that was so inspiring. Mm -hmm. Is uh, he calls these people river angels, and um, the entire trip, nine hundred eighty two miles. Um, his friends from back in Cincinnati, that's his hometown, that's where he's from, they would call ahead uh, to the uh, fire departments and police departments and this, you know, the parks departments and all that, and, and um, they would ask for anybody who wanted to donate or help out. Um, so he had off-duty sheriffs, fire department, you know, um, firemen, mm -hmm. um, all kinds of different people and random folks that he met, you know, driving their boats down the river that stopped, um, brought him water, supplies, food, and a lot of them even uh, shacked him up in their house and, you know, fed him for the night. Um, so I just found that completely amazing. You know, while he's doing this, uh, he's also getting all this positive feedback from random strangers which in the very big picture of this project, uh, it's all about helping strangers and loving, loving strangers. You know, we and always so go ahead. And, and your goal right now, because of this project, you're actually working on a film yes. to bring awareness to mental health, suicide. Yes, yes sir. Uh, it is called, how is your day going? Um, hashtag, how is your day going? Question mark, or just how, how is your day going? You can find it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, we just started a page. This podcast will be one of the first posts on it. Uh, I'm working on a trailer currently, like a little teaser, uh, and that should be done before Christmas. So you'll see that up there. And then, um, you know, just the outpouring of people that, that want to help, uh, this project is, is fantastic. We have, I think three or four big filmmakers all over the country, not big. We think we're big time, but we're not that big time. Yeah. Um, three or four filmmakers all over the country. I have my uncle uh, who is hopefully uh, going to help out produce uh, everything at the end of it so we can get this out there. We'll probably be going to different film festivals and things like that once we get uh, everything wrapped. Um, I'm assuming it should take about a year. Uh, he's currently working on a project with Elon Musk and NASA right now, so he's kind of busy. Oh, wow. Um, but once he gets done with that, uh, we're hoping that he'll help out on the back end of this deal so we can so get the story so out there. So take me back, you said six months ago, and, and primarily this year. Yes. Um, ha have you dealt with depression? Have you dealt with the, yes. the darkness a little bit there? Yeah, so that's that's the big part, you know. Um, so that, so that's so the push for me. That inspired, so your own... Yeah, through initially I had messaged Joe um, when he was two weeks from being done with that trip. I'm assuming he was somewhere in Indiana. Mm -hmm. um, so he was two weeks from Cairo, Illinois. Uh, I messaged him. I was out having some cocktails with some friends. I got home, uh, saw one of his posts. You know, he, he posted uh, videos. I think he got a GoPro to put on his kayak and he was 
doing all these videos. Um, I didn't expect him to, to answer me, but I messaged him and initially the uh, message said, hey, you know, what's going on, man? Uh, I really like what you're doing. I, you know, I, I can appreciate it because I currently uh, was going through some hard times mm -hmm. um, just with moving and trying to figure out who I was and, you know, things we all go through. Yeah. Uh, just kind of down in the dumps, which, you know, it, again, everybody goes through. But uh, I just wanted to tell him, you know, good job and I'm proud of you. Uh, just kind of give him some positive motivation to to keep going because that's a big that's a big yeah thing that's that cool he that you said that too. so uh, <laughs> uh, to my surprise he messaged me back right away uh, really? he must have been sitting on the beach on the side of the river uh, for the night uh -huh. you know getting ready to camp out and uh, we started talking and and initially it was hey next trip you go on I'll bring my kayak and I'll meet you and I'll bring some cameras let's yeah. go this is what I do you know um, video you know film production things mm -hmm. like that so he uh we got to talking and after about 20 30 minutes he said hey you know i want to do some kind of a documentary and i want to put this out there um you know and that said, that's what lit the match. that's what lit the flame. okay yeah because we talked the other day on the phone and i could tell you were excited yeah and, and i'm glad you're excited because you get to have you know you need that momentum but man you were a thousand miles over it's and I, and i was trying to figure out where to go yeah and I was more nervous. I was like, I really want Nick to tell a story, but I don't know if I can rein you in. And then today, it's just, it's, it, so now I get it. Yeah. So you guys have now been talking about this project for give or take six months, kind of on and off. So this is how it proceeded. <clears throat> um, we had that initial talk on, it was on Facebook Messenger. Okay. I got his number. Uh, when he was done with his trip, you know, I, I hit him up and said, congratulations, you know, um, where do you want to go from here? When do you want to meet? You know, let's at least meet up to see if there's something we could do. Um, if not meet up, we actually ended up having a Skype conversation because I was in uh, Columbus, Ohio, and he was getting ready to move from Cincinnati, West Virginia. So he was busy. I was home visiting family. Um, I got together with my brother-in-law, <clears throat> who's also a filmmaker. Okay. And uh, we had a little Skype conversation, kind of threw some ideas around. And that's where it started. It started just as a documentary about Joe. And, and that was, that was going to be it. Um, and then, you know, a lot of other things unfolded, uh, between that conversation and, um, about a month later when I <clears throat> came back to Columbus mm -hmm. from Texas. So, uh, what happened is I came back, still going through some tough times, came back to Texas, uh, was working, um, for about a month and a half. And uh, I was just, I was, it's just one of those things. I was miserable. I, I wanted to, you know, really, I just truly wanted to be with my family. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, we all want, want to be around family and loved ones if we're going through something like that. Sure. So, uh, I was counting down the days, 35 days until I, um, until I came, you know, back to Columbus to see my family. So when that time came, I would never been more stoked in my life. It was my birthday. It was on the uh, 26th of September. And I took off out of Texas, uh, stayed over in um, Illinois, uh, somewhere in Illinois at, at a Bayside. And I was, I was staying there. I woke up the next morning and I was excited. The next day was my birthday. Um, and I was supposed to have that conversation, the next conversation with Joe. Mm -hmm. uh, on the way home, we were going to set a date and actually start, you know, set a date to start filming or do an interview or something like that. So as I'm driving home, um, I get a phone call. And, well, it was a phone call from a homeowner. Uh, I, I'm also a roofer here yeah. in DFW. And so the week before, I would called all my homeowners from this year uh, because I wanted to gener see if I could generate some more work. So I called. 90% of them didn't answer, so I left them messages. Yeah. Um, I get a phone call about three hours out. I, I'll never forget this in my life. I was uh, making the turn um, in Indiana around Washington Street, getting back on 70 East. I was exactly three hours from home. Couldn't be more excited, ready to crack a beer for my birthday, you know, get home, see my dad and my mom. And uh, I get a phone call. And this phone call kind of changed changed everything for this project. Um, <clears throat> it was, I'm not going to uh, disclose any names, but um, it was a couple that, uh, they were two of the best people I've ever worked with in the roofing industry. Fantastic couple. Uh, I actually sat around and cut it up with the, the old man. His name was Ronnie. Um, a couple times after we got done working, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, talked about guns. He showed me his boats. He was just a real, real nice guy, you know, and she was a sweetheart. Let me bring my dog over and, and all that, which not a lot of homeowners do that. And 
and you know what right. we do. So she calls me and she says, "Hey Nick, I just you know got your got your message, and um, sorry it's you know a week late, but I just wanted to return your call. Unfortunately, Ronnie, which was her husband, um, went out you know out back and and he committed suicide. Holy um, shit! Yeah, it it you know uh, and and as a lot of people know that are listening to to this um, because after. All this started. Now I know actually how many people are affected by mental illness and, mm-hmm. and this thing that we're talking about. Um, that's a trigger, you know. Um, and and where with where I was at, I was almost home. All I wanted to do was get away from what I thought was, mm-hmm. you know, I just wanted to get to a safe place or what I thought was a safe place. Yeah. And it just seemed to start following me. So, you know, she said that to me, and and I heard the anguish in her voice, uh, and knowing how good of a guy he was and how sweetheart she is. You know, I just, I simply, all I could do is say, you know, um, I'll pray for you when I get back to, yeah, what to can Texas. You say? Yeah, I want to, I want to stop by your house and pray, and pray with you, you know, and God bless you. I mean, I couldn't really say anything else. I, and I started to lose it. Uh, I was just, it, it, it completely messed me up. Uh, so my joyfulness and my happiness because my birthday and all this stuff kind of went away. And as I'm driving 80 miles an hour down the highway, you know, I, I just start to, I start to lose it. I start to, I, it felt like I'm, I was blacking out, like somebody was about choking me out or something. You know, mm-hmm. I just, I was hyperventilating. I was about to lose it. And I just felt something. And this is one of the most, the, the, the wildest things that have ever happened in my whole life. Um, you know, I don't care what God you believe in. I don't care if you believe in anything, but something grabbed me on the back of my shoulders, like somebody was standing behind me. And, and I heard three things. I heard, it's going to be okay. I forgive you. At the time I'd been struggling with, with forgiveness, um, in certain parts of my life and certain people. Um, and the last thing I heard, um, while I had this just euphoria of, okay, uh, take over my body was you can do something about this and that right there set me off the rails um i got home that day uh three hours later i you know i cried all the way all the way from indianapolis to columbus because that was so profound i don't even know what it was but it was so profound that i just it it was so heavy i just couldn't do anything but just tear up and i get home i told my folks about what happened you know and um and wow, they were they were kind of shook up just listening to the story. Mm-hmm. And then I get another phone call. Um, this is the same day. This is three hours later. Uh, it was a, a very good friend of mine um, that had uh, committed suicide the day before, or earlier that day, more or less. On the same day. On the same day. And so um, what hit me about this one was not only was he a good friend, but his birthday was on the same day as my birthday was the next day. So, uh, normally him and I go out and get a beer, you know, um, shoot the shit and just have have a good time on our birthdays. Um, as long as we're in the same state, obviously. So, um, I found out about that and that just kind of floored me again, it, you know, all, all in the same four hours. And then as I'm making my phone calls to, you know, some of my friends to tell them what happened, um, I hear about another person that day or the day before. That, that had committed suicide. So, you know, um, all those things in a row uh, just just made me 100% feel like this was something that I had to do. And this is, I felt like somebody grabbed my shoulder and for 10 seconds I was free of any pain, anything like that, and I could think. And basically move the chess piece and, and you know, move me in a different direction and say, this is what you're supposed to do now. Pretty heavy, bro. It's, it's very heavy. It was, it was, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's Man, easier to talk about it now than it was then. I'm, I can only imagine, um, you know, I've had, I've had some friends that have taken their life. I've had some family members taking their life. And, um, you know, you never, you never process it the same. You're just like, what? Uh, I trained with some guys this year and last year, 1% guys, I mean, bad mother. And in private, I was talking to one individual and on the outside looking in, everything's great. Uh-huh. Awesome. Badass dude. Super handsome. Rip. You know, check, great. On your, check on your strong friends. Yeah. And 
come to find out, you know, several years ago, he had gone into a really, really dark place. Mm-hmm. And we got to talking about it. And, and, and I was glad that he told me this story, but I, I quickly realized he was so reluctant to tell me this stuff because he thought, like, I, I'm somehow going to look down on him. Like, he's weak. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that I think I don't understand how to do yet. I don't know how to reach people in that way. But I do know what, I, what I've learned is that I think once, you know, I, I use the expression iron sharpens iron a lot. Uh-huh. And, and I think the awareness of it, I think when people start to see like, oh, that guy over there, okay, he's like, I looked up to him and now he's equally in the mindset of like, well, he, he had gone through some stuff. Yeah. Makes it more relatable. People become a little bit more vulnerable and realize like, it's okay that you're, you're not perfect, man. Uh-huh. Like, but I don't know how to reach anybody on a on a daily level, unlike what you're doing, to touch on that person. And say that is what came. <clears throat> I, obviously, it's hard to think of a title for anything, mm-hmm. um, especially when I have somebody who I'm basically telling the story about. And yeah. Obviously, I you know had that thought had crossed my mind like, oh, maybe he's going to be offended because it's not something about kayaking or something. About yeah. Him. But really, he saw the bigger picture, which was which was fantastic. And the way that the title came about is uh, pretty much what I do in my everyday life. You know, I, I try to, if I can, if I can make somebody's day better, one person every day, uh, even if it's just a sentence or handing out this card or really anything you can do, um, any act of kindness, then then that's what I'll do. And and how is your day going? Is typically the first thing I say to anyone. Yes. Whether it be uh, a friend or or the person at the gas station that's working the cash mm-hmm. register, you know, because that person might be having a bad day, and so. I found over the last 10 years, um, asking this question over and over and over and over and over again, uh, 80% of the people will, you know, just give you a typical, yeah, it's going okay. You know, oh, I'm here. I'm at work. You know, but we all hear those sayings Mm -hmm. every now and then somebody's honest and every now and then somebody's having a bad day and they'll look at you and every now and then somebody will say, I'm having a shitty day and that's your moment. I am having a bad day. And at that point in time, you have, whether it be giving this card to them or saying something to them or just, you know, that's why there's a saying on each one of the cards. Yeah. On the back of each one of the cards is a different saying. Are they all different? Uh, yeah. And I just ordered another thousand of them because I have people all over, all over the country that want to help pass them out. So, um, and, you know, that is when you have the opportunity, whether it be one second or a 10 minute conversation to change somebody's entire day. direction. And you can do that with one little tiny thing. I know. And I know yeah. from firsthand experience, um, I had something profound happen to me this year. Um, 2017 is probably one of my darker years that I've had. You know, my wife is looking at me like, what is wrong? Like she... She's super happy. Like uh-huh. she doesn't have these thoughts. She doesn't get it, and that's probably why God put her yeah. in my life. Like, yeah. okay, hey. you need her, so I'm grateful to have it's a, her. It's a sweet balance. I, yeah, she I, is I, a sweetheart. I, I put her through some shit for sure. <laughs> but in 2017, um, I was doing a lot of videos at the time, and and I got into doing videos because it was it, it was one it was a way for me to kind of have a, a, a thing an online diary, but two. I was getting these DMs and private messages from people saying, thank you for the motivation and it's lifting me up. Mm-hmm. So I'd done this stupid ass video on the beach. It's on my YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And it was, and I called it, titled it Just Breathe. And I just, it was a minute, 30 seconds. And I was just being motivational guy. Cause some people like it. Some people don't like mm-hmm. it. I get why you don't like it. I get why you do like it. Mm-hmm. So I post this dumb ass video online, post it up. Left it there forever. Post it on Facebook. Left it over there. So this year I'm at, I'm at, I'm going to call it a customer's house. Okay. Right. And we're doing some landscape. And it's like day three. And my buddy comes over and pulls me aside and says, Hey man, I want to, I want to thank you for something. And I was like, yeah, you know, like I thought, you know, doing a good landscape. Job. He said, I want to thank you for saving my life. And I was like, do what? And he goes, pretty heavy. Two years ago. I was laying on the couch on a Saturday. My kids are outside playing, and I was thinking about killing myself. Mm-hmm. Like, I was really, like, this is what I was going to do. And I'm thumbing through Facebook, and I saw your video popped up, and I pressed play. The one on the beach. The one, just breathe. Yeah. And this stupid-ass motivational thing that I posted up that, you know, I was trying to, you know, get some likes and shares or whatever. Right. And I meant it. Yeah. But it was corny as hell. Mm-hmm. 
He said, dude, that's that that saved my life. I got off the couch and I went outside and started playing my kids. Little, little things. And he's like, I want to thank you. And then it it occurred to me, and I think a lot of people downplay a lot of people downplay that they can't help. A lot of people downplay that there's a lot of people watching. There's a lot of people watching everybody mm-hmm. doing stuff. And like you said, that's that simple act of kindness, like you're talking about, could change the course and direct you know trajectory of somebody's life. Mm-hmm. Just by being a nice guy versus being an asshole yeah. and telling somebody to go screw themselves or, you know, we all have our fits and our moments, but everybody does bad. Day. And I, and I think to me, when you told me about this project, that was probably what rela- like, I went to that and then I went to you and I'm like, oh yeah, like it circled the dots for me. I'm like, no, you can do something with this mm-hmm. and this can be a very powerful thing. And you were saying like, you've been handing these out. So what sort of reactions have you had this year with people like, so I think my favorite trip like i said i just ordered another thousand of them i said when i when i had the idea for this documentary after we had all these talks and everything and we decided we were going to do it that was it i you know we didn't have anything on paper i hadn't written anything yeah um you know so i was kind of just sitting there with my like ricky bobby like mm-hmm. i don't know what to do with my hands mm-hmm. you know and so i was like well um Got to start somewhere. We have to do something. So I just drove to Staples. That's what I did. I didn't know what I was going to do when I got to Staples. I just knew I wanted something to hand out. So, um, you know, through my own businesses, I do work with the people there in Pickerington, Ohio. They're fantastic. And um, I walked in. I said, okay, I want to put a message on a card. And then I want to write my own message on the back. And then I want to laminate them. Can we do this? And he said, yeah, and he told me how to do it, and I said, okay, uh, they'll be ready in two or three days. So I so I uh, got 250 of them. Well, I started passing them out, and, um, <clears throat> well, shoot, I put a page, you know, picture on Facebook, and within two days, I had 10 people hit me up and say, hey, send me some of those cards. Um, so first thing, first thought was I need to recruit more people to help me make them because it yeah. took me forever to make right. these things. Right. And uh, But then after that, I came back to Dallas, and I took a trip from Columbus, Ohio, to Dallas, Texas. And on the way here, I think I made nine people cry. And it, I, when I say that, it might... In a good way. Yeah, in a good way. It was, it was a good way. Um, you know, uh, as I pass these out to people, just like I was saying, when you, when you ask somebody, how's your day going, uh, every now and then um, somebody will, you know tell you, hey, I'm having a right. bad day. Well, same thing with these cards. You know, 60% of the people might just take it and say, oh, thank you. You know, mm-hmm. I'll read it later or whatever. But the other percent, you know, the other 40% will, a lot of them lost it, you know. Hmm. Um, I passed it out to, I think, uh, people that worked at Subway on the way here, Arby's, every gas station I stopped at. Um, and I think four or five people just broke down and cried at work. Um, and just said, thank you. Uh, you know, and that, that's when I started realizing how big of a project this actually was going to be. Um, since then I've had people, I just had a lady from, uh, the tie up in the air force, Mm -hmm. uh, over near Greenfield, the air force base, um, that we're going to be interviewing her right after Christmas. Um, so people in the military are starting to reach out because obviously uh, military suicide is, 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 you know, it's not a whole nother thing, but it's, it's a whole different side of this thing. It's, it's, you know, and, and everybody, you know, might know about the 22 a day or whatever, whatever yeah. it is now, who knows what it is now. But, um, you know, that, that goes for all people. And that's something I didn't realize until I started doing this and started passing these cards out. Um, I did not realize how many people were affected by this, uh, whether it be them or, you know, indirectly with somebody they know or a family member or a loved one. Uh, everybody seems to have a story uh, that they can relate to this project, mm-hmm. um, which, in my opinion, makes it very, very needed. Um, you know, like you said, like we first talked about, it is really taboo. You know, I've got some really good friends that, that don't, they've been well enough of good of my friends that will listen to me talk about this side of my mind where I can go. Uh-huh. But they'll look at me like I'm crazy. Like, I don't get it. But, hey, dude, if you ever need me, call me. Mm-hmm. He's like, I, I'm, you know, I've got some friends. And like I said, my wife, Kim's never had this day that, you know, these, I want to blow my brain nowadays. Yeah. And I can remember having this self-worth side in my mind since a little bitty kid. I, and I, I don't know where it stemmed from. But where I was going with this is, you know, through the years and especially in the past four or five years, it, I, everybody has their thing. 
And what I mean by that is like, you know, you, you might have irritable bowel syndrome or you might be diabetic or you might lose your hair. Or you might be overweight or you might be a porn freak or everybody's got something, some right? Kind of yeah, issue. some sort of something, yeah. right? <laughs> so this is kind of like my thing that I have to deal with. I have to, I have to really watch the self-talk. I have mm-hmm. to watch, I hate to say voices in my head, yeah. but I got to watch what I'm saying to myself. Right. And so over the past two years, I've kind of figured out a pattern that really works for me. Like... I have to have projects, Mm -hmm. you know, whether I go walk 50 miles of rucksack or do an Ironman or go to the Baja 1000. Yep. Like that's part of it. Now I got a couple kids. Now they're projects. That's good. They definitely keep you busy. I have to, I have to watch my alcohol intake real closely because that, you know, going to drop your serotonin levels. Not good. Mm -hmm. So I've got to watch that. I've gotten, I've gotten real, I've gotten more of a nutritional standpoint. Like I watch, like I stay away from sugar and processed foods. I don't know why, but it just ching that. Mm-hmm. I watch the energy that I'm around with people real closely. I watch. I don't watch the news anymore. Like I've got this. I whole... think the energy with people <laughs> is something that comes with age. Yeah, you know, you get to know. You know, uh, I don't. Yeah, you know, I think it probably happens to people at different ages. Um, but I know it. You know, probably in the last five. I'm 31. Probably in the last five years. You know, I've kind of, you know, taken a real good look at, you know, who I'm surrounded by. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're surrounded by people that are negative, um, you are way more prone to be negative towards people. If you're surrounded by people that are lifting you up and people that are ambitious and go, go, going, um, you know, that's, that's, that's way better off than, than if you're around negative people. And that's, that's one of the reasons I'm in Dallas is Mm. because, you know, uh, there's a group of people here that are. They're very ambitious and, and know what they want. And, yeah. you know, it's kind of a good role model for me. Um, but, yeah, I'm just kind of rambling at this no, point. No, and, and, and I guess kind of where I was going is, so with this documentary, you've talked about you're going to talk to some doctors, psychiatrists, psychologists, yep. and you're going to kind of study this landscape. I think that it's fair to say that I don't know that anybody has a an idea, like, what what ta- what gets into the mind of a person and they finally go cuz i've been to the edge mm-hmm. but i haven't acted i right. thought about it thought about it a lot mm-hmm. i've now i've been to a point where i was willing to go talk to people about that and that's that's a big thing too and and when you say taboo um, i think the most taboo part of this entire deal uh, besides people speaking up in general is going to get therapy yeah and you know that's that's you know there you'll see a lot of memes on the internet nowadays which i'm really stoked that i in the even just in the past three months or maybe it's just because i've been doing this project and noticing Mm -hmm. it but there's a lot more um you know make therapy mainstream or not mainstream but make it acceptable yeah to the public make it okay you know, so people aren't scared to go to go talk to someone um, because, you know, that ultimately would help anyone. I it's I'm just to you. say what they're thinking. I don't. I, it's kind of like what I said earlier is like, you know, if we came across anybody anywhere that had a compound fracture. Right. Sticking out of the arm. You'd be able to go. Or at least what happened to you. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> what happened back? <laughs> but it's still bizarre to me that we're in a society at this stage that. Excuse me, that it's still, I, I think it is as taboo, man. And I think, I, I don't, you know, I'm starting to see a lot of, I, I guess, alpha males or, or guys that are that are starting to say, hey, man, like, you can be a man and still talk about your feelings. And yeah. It doesn't mean you're any less. Nope. You can say, hey, you're hurting. You know, like, things and aren't going right. It wouldn't hurt if a lot of, you know, alpha males or people that are in the spotlight, you know, yeah. um, athletes or whoever it may be. You know, it'd be cool to, you know, get a hold of some of those guys and, and get them involved in, in the documentary or at least getting them out there to, to speak, you know, about yeah. it. Yeah, my, my the thing is, you know, it's not not everybody has to sit around a kumbaya and light candles and, right. you know, paint each other confetti. But <laughs> I think that there comes a time and place where, you know, I, like I go back to the iron sharpens iron. And I think this that even this podcast will help that. It's like, man. It's cool that you don't have it all together. Mm-hmm. It's cool that you're nobody has it all together. It's cool you carry, bro. Like you can sit in the corner, nobody has. You know, one of the my, my, one of the most favorite scenes in my entire life, and I relate to, I, well, somewhat relatable. Well, I can't. So, in Saving Private Ryan, I don't know if you remember the scene. Mm-hmm. So they're going oh, to gosh. take they're going to take the hill, right? right? And Tom Hanks, and they're just smoking everybody and killing everybody, and a guy dies, and it was a horrible situation. But Tom Hanks is still the leader. He's still the captain of a. And he goes over to the other side of the hill 
and tucks his head, and he just starts whimpering. And he's mm-hmm. crying, and he's checking back to see if anybody's looking, But because he, he's got to keep it all together. Mm-hmm. His guys can't see that. And that scene in that movie, for some reason, is always just stuck in my head. I'm like, mm, I, I relate to that. I relate to like being that guy, mm-hmm. trying to keep it all together, yeah. and you can't. And you go, you're just trying to figure it all out. But, um, man, I, I'm, I'm very excited for you. Um, you know, I, I, I'm glad that we finally kind of, I'm glad to put all the blocks together. Um, how do people find this, by the way? Like, what what do you need? Because there's people watching, and I want them to start well, getting in your DMs. Well, shoot, that's, you know, it's, we, we, you know, I'll have a better idea in the next few months once I get, you know, a schedule mm-hmm. sorted out. You know, pretty much what we're doing now is scheduling interviews. Uh, like you said, with psychiatrists, a lot of it's going to be shot in Cincinnati, Ohio, because that is where the main backstory for the documentary is. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Eventually, we are going to have a GoFundMe. Uh, we're going to try to do some sourcing to where we can get some funding, um, so I can, you know, probably pay some editors and things like that because we're going to need to hire some. What people. kind of money do you think you need to put this thing together? Oh man, I don't even know. It's 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 getting it's getting to be big, um, and I'm going to have to look uh, to some outside sources to some smarter folks. Yeah, um, that are in the industry that have been there for thirty years, and I luckily I have those resources to talk to people. Uh, to get an, a good idea of what we do next, because mm-hmm. uh, like I said, it started off being this this small documentary, which I wasn't planning on doing a ton with. Um, to this, hopefully, is going to be you know we want it to be on Netflix, we want it to be out there um, in the big time, because there is not a documentary nothing. about this. No, which <laughs> this is one of the biggest subjects in the country that's nobody's talking about, and. We really need something uh, on this subject, um, it, you know, if it's just to help people. Yeah. So, you know, I'd like to, you know, just say whoever's watching this, um, you know, if you're going through, you know, hard time, it's it's not it's not just you. Everybody else, you know, at least once in their life, everyone has gone through some kind of struggle. Um, you're definitely not alone. Uh, and just like I said before, uh, in the process of you know, recruiting all these people and having all these people reach out and just talking to people. Uh, I've noticed that this problem is way bigger than I actually thought. Yeah. It Cause it's beneath the surface. No yes. one talks about it, but it's yeah. everywhere. So, you know, I encourage people, you know, if uh, you are going through some, some hard times, reach out to your friends, people you love, um, you know, and, and get, you know, it is not a bad thing to go get therapy. No, it's not a bad thing to reach out to somebody and just go lay on a couch and, yeah pour your freaking heart out man and you know uh you might not want to now but after that's done you might feel like a house is off your shoulders and hopefully you know uh might with this whole project if if we can save one freaking life you know then that's that's you uh, probably will never know that's goodbye i don't care (laughs) i don't care that's good by me man i you know and that's that's what it's all about it's all about paying it forward it's all about spreading love in a world that's full of you know, the social media hate and all these angry people. And, you know, um, like you said, news, I stopped mm-hmm. watching the news in 2014 because it just made me angry. Yeah. I mean, right. Good Lord. I was just mad all the time. And then I, I was actually, I was, it was 2014. I was in Beaver Creek. I was living up in uh, Avon, Colorado and I was in a class. It was a taught by a psychiatrist. I forget her name. She was, she was fantastic. And I'd come in every day and I'd just be angry about what I saw on the news, what I saw on CNN or Fox or I watched them all, you know, and, and she just looked at me one day and said, why, why are you watching all that? Why why are you doing that? Yeah. I I went home that day. I canceled my cable service and I haven't watched mainstream media since. And, uh, and I'm, I'm way better off for it, but (laughs) you know, uh, just on social media, just that there's a lot of hatred out there and a lot of people that are trying to bring people down. And what I want to do is, um, you know, is get people loving strangers, loving their friends, and just and just loving people a little bit more than they normally do. You know, it's the holidays, time of giving, things like that. Yeah, that's great. But but why don't we do that all the time? Right. Why can't we care about each other all year round? Is it I mean, if we did that, our quality of life would be fantastic. Seems like it would go up a lot for me. You know, if we if we did if if everybody watching this went out and did one nice thing for a stranger tomorrow um, I think that this world would be a lot, a lot better off. Dan, I mean, a hundred percent, I agree yeah. with that. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know how anybody could. I, I get how people could view this and go, well, it "Might not be my bag." Mm-hmm. That's cool, 
But overall, like you're not trying to take anything from it. You're trying to add value to people's life and, and you're doing it in such a way that it's, it, it's coming from a very passionate place in your heart. Yep. I mean, you lost a good friend. You That's, had some very impact. With, you've, you've dealt with the demons on your own. Yeah. And, you know, in my mind, when I, when I heard about this, when, when Kim told me and then, you know, when we sat down the other day and talked, I was just like, there's just, there's something pure about the project, man. And mm-hmm. I, and I really want to <clears> see you through. And, and I think I, maybe I felt like it was kind of like my responsibility, like to bring you in here and, and, you know, put the needle in your arm a little deeper yeah. and go do, you know, get after it's, it. It's different being on this side of the camera lens. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, it's not something I'm used to, but, uh, passion drives the whole project, uh, more than I've ever, any project I've ever done. Um, and that's, that's key for me. Um, you know, um, the, all that we have set up right now, you asked before, how do people to, you know, yeah. check out what we're doing? Um, how is your day going? Question mark, no spaces on Facebook. If you just type that in, um, uh, there's not a lot on there. I just created the page. Um, but yeah, here's a picture of you'll it. see a picture of Joseph Solomon. Okay. That's the that's he's the, the kayak that's guy. the gentleman that okay. yep, that went kayaking. And uh and that's gonna be the base story behind the documentary. Now now every good documentary has a backstory, which yeah. is gonna be his. Um it's also gonna be followed by interviews from the street uh in Dallas and Cincinnati and probably Columbus and a few other cities, as well as doctors and psychiatrists on the matter and things like that. Um, but it's a way, you know, uh, a lot of good documentaries have a backstory and then they have a way deeper meaning mm-hmm. and, and, and the deeper meaning behind this entire project is, is to reach out to everyone who's going through some hard times or know someone who's going through some hard times and just, and just basically spreading the love. Like I said before, yeah, that's, that's what it's all about, man. That's beautiful, man. I mean, I, I think, uh. I think it's an opportunity to, to really leave your mark, you know, in a, in a better way. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, I don't know really what else to say. I, uh, I hope that in four months we can sit down and talk some more about it and shed some light on it. Yeah, and, and by then we will have uh, trailers and teasers and all kinds of stuff. You know, we might be able to interject some of those into, into the podcast and... Um, and we'll have a, how do I get, how do I get some cards? Cause I want to hand out some cards. Well, I just ordered another thousand. Okay. Um, So my girlfriend and I are heading home for Christmas here in, uh, two, two days, I believe on Friday. Um, and we are going to get those and and get them all set up and put together and, uh, just let me know and we'll, and we'll send them out. Um, Nick Miller on Facebook, there's 8,000 Nick Millers, but, uh, you can, how do you find, find yours? You can find, <laughs> yeah, you can find me. At, I've lived in most cities in this in this country, so you can uh, find me attached to the documentary information. Um, <laughs> and if you'd like to help out, uh, reach out, and I'll be happy to mail you, you know, 10, 20 cards, and, and we want to get these things circulating all around Yeah, you're going to have to get that going snappy, because I feel like... We're going to hire... We're going to need to hire a team of card writers, really. <laughs> so this... So on the front, that's actually handwritten. That's handwritten. Smile. And that's why I wanted it to be personal. Actually, I, my mother did... Did the, the smiley face. I don't that's, know if y'all can see that, but on the front of the car yeah. it says smile. Shout out to Kim Miller. Yeah, like, she smile, you're beautiful. She's she's written that smiley face on every note she's ever uh, sent to me since. So I was can a I if I get kid, my own so. cards, can I write my own thing? <laughs> you can, yeah. So no, she was she was uh she thought it was funny that I wanted her to put her her little mark on there. So So your goal um, right now too is though that like you just said, um if people want these cards, oh you're getting you're setting this up still. Yeah, but they can go on and then you'll ship the cards to them and they can hand those out they can people. shoot me a you know a personal message uh and with their address and i'd be happy to send them out uh whoever would like them um you know uh, all that we ask because the cards don't say anything about the documentary mm-hmm. is uh when you hand them out uh simply you know let the person know that you give them to the hey this is what's going on uh this is what we're working on and, and we're trying to just yeah, you ought to get the uh, Facebook. Yeah, I should. Page and that's, on the probably next gonna, one. that's probably going to be on the next one, but those things didn't exist. Yeah, I, I looked at the page earlier. You have already a couple hundred people already on there. Oh yeah, yeah. It was uh, about 180 and when did you launch that hours. last week? About 48 hours ago. Okay, because so, yeah, because we started talking about doing yeah, getting together. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that care about this subject, and you know, um, and it's going to be far outstretched from you know. Rather, it's not going to be just the people that I know. I, I see this thing hopefully going nationwide, and hopefully we can get this thing in front of millions of people. Man, I like I said, I really think it's badass. Um, just uh, just a month ago, we had a, a friend from high school, and uh, she 
they didn't say it, but she took her life. And it was just another one of those that mm -hmm. that we, you know, when the when word got spread, you looked at it and like, what, what? What could I do? How, what could how, I have done? Or, and you ask yourself, you're like, what, what was going through that? Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, um, it, you know, it's hard to say, it, but I get it, but I don't. Yeah. I, I get it that it, it can get that bad in your head because I've been there personally in my head and thought these crazy ass thoughts and been mm -hmm. like, huh? And, you know, and I could take all the medication and whatever and just things weren't, eh. but you know, you, I just, I never had the balls to do it the other way. And I'm glad I didn't, right. you know, cause I've got it. I've got these two little boys, you know, some of my, my own experiences, like when I was going through some of my harder times several years ago, I was like pissed off at my kids. Yeah. Cause like these little bastards, they got to fuck. I've got, they've got, okay, I've got to get my crap together because I have these guys, you yeah. know? And and it was in a, you know, it's a really, it's a really hollow place. And, and you know, it's like you said, it's like, uh, I wouldn't want my worst enemy to feel like that. No. You know, I don't want to feel that way again. And, I, and so I have to watch how I do things. You know, I, well, this is my bag. This is what I've found. Um, like, like I've said many times, and you have too, uh, I go through my own, you know, spouts of, of depression and things like that because I have a lot going on, you know. Uh, yeah. Shoot, I went, you know, seven years where I moved every six months and heck yeah, I lived all over the country and everybody on Facebook sees the cool parts of that and, you know, when I go mm home, -hmm. oh, oh, hey man, we're following you all over the place. We've seen you doing this and that, but really, you know, you don't know what somebody's going through, you know. Um, not many people might know that, you know, I was going through some bad times yeah. throughout throughout that six years. Yeah, because you're like, myself. you're super bubbly and happy all the time. Yeah, exactly. got, I never would have thought in a million years that you had. Exactly. And, so. I, and I think probably some people could say the same for me on the, you know, because I can, I can make things look a certain yeah. way. But then I go home and I shut the door and pull the blinds down and I'm, and then I'm alone with yeah. my thoughts. So, so, you know, all I have to say to the public is, you know, if, you, if you're going through something, I love you. Um, we love you here uh, at How's Your Day Going with what we're doing. This is, this is your project. And, um, you know, uh, just, you know, keep going. You're going to be okay. If you need to reach out to somebody, please go do it. Um, it's, it's nothing bad on you um, and it'll do nothing but help you. So, um, but I have found, you know, helping people, starting this project, talking to people, gets seeing these people you. crying gets me out of oh, my man. head you go, and it helps me. Yeah. You know, the best way you can help yourself is by helping other, other people. people. And, and that doesn't have to be donating to anything. You know, yeah. that could just be, you know, asking somebody how's their day going. That's it. Well, Nick, I think it's beautifully said. I'm really pumped for you, man. I think you're crazy enough to pull this off you know i really want to see it happen for you um guys go on find nick's page how's your day going question mark hashtag stuff um get behind this i'm sure if you've not dealt with it you probably had a loved one that's dealt with that if you hell even had a friend that you didn't know going through that exactly nick dude uh let's get back together in a couple months Ooh. We just hit the mic. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get back together Check. in a couple months. One, two. Yeah, one, two. One of these days, I'm going to get this podcast <laughs> trim done. But hey, like you said, you know, like when you said, I just went to Kinko's and just said, I don't know yeah. what I'm doing. That's exactly how this podcast has started. I don't know how it's all going down. You got to start but, somewhere. Uh, cool, man. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, sir. Thanks, folks. All right.